Explain briefly what we're talking about, because this it's is a, critical to the understanding it's, of the it's whole a thing. It's a phenomenon that's been known about for many decades. We have very good climate records of the last ice age and of the last 20,000 years. And here's, the, here's how it was, that the peak of the last ice age was about 21,000 years ago. The world was at its coldest, uh, the ice sheets were at their deepest, covering most of the northern half of North America, most of the northern half of northern Europe. And then, slowly, the climate began to warm, and the ice sheets began to thin out a bit. Not a lot. They were still very much intact by 12,800 years ago, but they were less, substantially less than they had been 20,000 years ago. And then, as, just as the world is going into this nice warming trend, there's a sudden radical change in climate. And, and climate, the, the, the temperature drops massively. And we see that, that spike here, where above the letters YD, as the, 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 the global temperature just plunges to, to as cold as it was at the coldest point of the Ice Age. And this episode lasts for 1,200 years, from 12,800 to 11,600 years ago. And then equally mysteriously, global temper, temperature rockets up. Uh, rockets up again. Uh, I mean, these changes in temperature are, are gigantic. Any modern talk of, of global warming, and let's set aside all the issues around that, any modern talk of global warming is just peanuts. It's just a tiny, tiny little blip by comparison with what happened during the Younger Dryas. And the other thing that we know happened during the Younger Dryas was that there were massive global extinctions of animal species, although the epicenter of these extinctions was in the Americas, particularly in North America. It was a, it was a global problem. So s clearly something very, very bad happened. And this, this attracted the attention of, of a group of very major mainstream scientists, uh, earth scientists, geologists mainly, who were trying to get to the bottom of this. Why did this sudden climate shift happen? What caused it to happen? Uh, and they began to investigate. They began to look at the earth. They began to look at the stratum of soil that goes back to that period. And what they found in that stratum from 12,800 years ago was a thick layer of soot which is evidence of continent-wide wildfires. And embedded in and just below the soot, they found a number of very specific things. They found nanodiamonds, tiny, tiny diamonds that are only visible under a microscope. They found melt glass, which is basically trinitite, the stuff that, that you know, we, we, we saw after the first nuclear, nuclear explosions on, on Earth, the evidence of enormous heat, um, ca carbon spherules, a, a layer of iridium in, in the soil. All of these we know already from previous research, research, for example, done on the extinction of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago, we know already that these are the sure and certain signs of a cosmic impact. Nothing else can cause them. Nothing else can cause temperatures in excess of the boiling point of quartz across 50 million square miles of the Earth's surface. And that's what we're finding uh, in the Younger Dryas boundary, this layer of soil which marks the end of one period and the beginning of another and it was a cataclysmic end and so they realized that there had been a cosmic impact. It hadn't been noticed before. Nobody had found any crater. Normally craters are what we look for uh, right. if we're dealing with a cosmic, and nobody had found one. But now we know why initially craters were not found. This is the area uh, where the evidence for the Younger Dryas impact has, has come from. See, comets, the, uh, the, I have to cut to the chase. Yeah, absolutely. We're dealing with a comet here. We're dealing with a giant comet. The evidence is now in. This is a comet that would have been in the range of 100 to 200 kilometers in diameter, which entered the inner solar system from deep space about 20,000 years ago. It was captured by the sun and went into an orbit that crosses the orbit of the Earth. As comets often do, it began to break up into multiple fragments, some of them very large, some of them quite small. Some, some of them a kilometer in diameter, some of them a meter in diameter, some of them just dust and debris, some of them huge rocks. And what happened was at least four of those rocks, as the Earth was crossing the path of the comet, the debris, as the comet begins to break out, spreads up right along the orbit of the comet. And as the Earth was passing through the orbit of the comet, at least four of those large chunks in the range of one to two kilometers of, in diameter entered the Earth's atmosphere and smacked into what was then the North American ice cap. 12,800 years ago, it was still a couple of kilometers deep. And, and so the craters were excavated in ice, and they were transient. As the ice melted away in the enormous shock and heat created by these impacts, as the ice melted away, the craters vanished. 
That's not the complete story, though, because in, within the last year, the evidence for craters has begun to be found. Right at the edge of the North American ice cap, there are a number of craters, the Cor Corosol crater, the Bloody Creek structure, and so on, that are now firmly associated with this event. And there is evidence of shock effects on the ground under the ice cap. So the impacts were huge enough to shock the ground beneath that two kilometer deep ice. Uh, and, and, and now the case has gone from being an argument among scientists to being just about as close to absolutely defined fact as it's possible to get in science. We were hit by fragments of a giant comet 12,800 years ago, and it changed everything. And this, I believe, was the cataclysm which lost us a whole civilization and knocked us on the head as a species and made us uh, a species with amnesia. And the story's not over, because 12,800 years ago, the Earth goes into this hell regime of the Younger Dryas, dreadfully freezing cold, animal extinctions everywhere. Last 1,200 years, and then we shoot out into warmer climates. That's also further fragments of the same comet. Again, the Earth crosses their path. They plow into the atmosphere. This time, they hit ocean. And, and the, effect, uh, the effect is to throw an enormous amount of water vapor up into the upper atmosphere uh, and create a greenhouse effect, which causes the very rapid warming that occurred at that time and was, of course, accompanied by enormous tidal waves and, and global floods 11,600 years ago. That is the date for the foundation of Gobekli Tepe, and that is the date that Plato gave us long ago for the destruction of the lost civilization of Atlantis. Now